El Moro National Monument was established on December 8, 1906 as uh, the nation's second national monument. It was established by Theodore Roosevelt and El Moro National Monument uh, protects over 1,200 acres here in uh, Cibola County and it was established first to protect the historic inscriptions found here and it was later expanded in 1917 by President Woodrow Wilson to protect the large archaeological sites in this area. And we're now atop Inscription Rock and we're inside Atsina Pueblo which is a 700 year old building that uh, contains eight to nine hundred different rooms. A really interesting thing about this uh, Pueblo is that about 99 percent of it is unexcavated and it's, uh, it's one of the true gems in the National Park system. Uh, of course uh, El Moro uh, as a stopping place uh, it's been known uh, for some time, of course, we, we have the prehistoric the, the, uh, artwork here on it, so uh, uh, Native Americans have been here for thousands of years, leaving their marks. Uh, we have the first governor of New Mexico, Juan de Añate, uh, inscribed uh, 1605. We knew he was here actually in 1598. And uh, we have all these other inscriptions. And all right, what about anyone earlier? Is it possible? Uh, laid out sample areas out here. Uh, you, it's, it's based, frankly, comes down to hunches. You, uh, your own human experience, where were you going to camp if you needed water? Within a few hours we found a uh, very, very object that we were looking for was this, uh, the nail, bifacet head nail, which we know uh, ceased being used. It, it drops out of the archaeological record by around 1550 A.D. Perfect. This is it. It was an extremely important moment to have that uncovered. Around 1990, it was becoming uh, apparent for those few people interested in this very topic of the Coronado expedition that these nails uh, are associated with that expedition. And uh, another, uh, what were the purpose of those uh, these nails? You'd find them. What do they mean? Someone found an actual horseshoe of the period with a horseshoe nail in it. One of the significant aspects of the Coronado early research here has been the identification of a diagnostic artifact. That, uh, that allows us to identify the presence of the expedition. And a diagnostic artifact is uh, something that is very specific to a, a time period or a cultural um, group or phenomenon. If we have a diagnostic artifact uh, pre-1550, we know that that's uh, most likely a Coronado expedition. One of the interesting things about the, the Vasquez de Coronado expedition is that so many people in the past, over the last hundred years or so, have found material that relates to that expedition, but not realized it. The material was found, but people really weren't focusing particularly on the historic component. They, they knew that the records were related to those sites and that the expedition had probably visited there but they weren't looking at the material and they weren't realizing that there was a medieval component to a lot of the artifacts that they were looking at. So, for example, crossbow bolts, people had identified them as pen points because they really hadn't consulted a medieval uh, expert on material culture. And when you think about Mex New Mexico as being a medieval uh, location, which it was in the 16th century, you consult people who know about artifacts of that period and you suddenly realize that what you're looking at isn't an instrument to write with, it's a weapon. One of the important elements of the uh, discovery of Vasco de Coronado material at El Moro is the fact that it's uh, midway between two of the key points in the Coronado expedition's route. Uh, one at Zuni, where they were camped for four months, and the other in Albuquerque, uh, where they were camped for 17 months. And so we're midway between there. And it's really a matter of how do you get there from point A to point B. They're following trails, specifically the Zuni Trail, which was connected to the trade route. It was a major trade route, route uh, the prehistoric period on up. Uh, and they would have traveled along this trail. The other aspect of it is they would have need water. You had 3,000 plus individuals plus 8,000 head livestock. Uh, conservative estimates, they would need something like 80 to 100,000 gallons of potable water a day. Where do you get that? 
uh, logical place that uh, El Moro here, the tank would provide some, that's only a few thousand gallons, but all around the surrounding area there are playas areas, intermittent uh, or, or ponds that would dry up, but they would, would hold water at some springs. They would be covered over this large area here. So they would have to have come here. I think a lot of our colleagues in, in other parts of the Americas would envy this position because now essentially we have uh, beads on a necklace. We have three points, uh, the middle of which is El Moro. And the fact that we have that point gives us an opportunity to map the corridor with known points. The problem in the past has been that a lot of people have hypothesized routes without really having those fixed uh, known points. We have them now.